Hello everybody, I'm High Noon, and today I wanted to show you how I recreated the trap from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. You know, the one where the ceiling comes down on the victim, I would say, and tries to crash them. Of course, uh, in, the, in the movie they managed to escape, but that's up to you really. I'm gonna show that in a second. First of all, I should probably say this tutorial is not meant to explain the trigger mechanism for this creation. I will say something about these two circuits because they are kind of important for this whole setup to work, but you don't really need to do to, to do it like I did, um, especially because this is um, this is just a temporary thing. It's not really supposed to work like this. I mean, you could easily escape if you saw this um, if you saw this uh, tripwire hook. But anyways, I'm just gonna go in and show you how it works. The doors are gonna shut on us. Also, the lights. And the ceiling is gonna slowly go down. And takes a little while, obviously, because you don't want an instant kill, right? Where's the panic in the victim? Ugh. Nip. I mean, you can just be evil. You need to be stylishly evil, right? But that's how you get out of here. Um, I used lamps to wire the escape mechanism because you can break them in adventure mode. And if you're if you're uh, using this for uh, an adventure map, you Mm, uh, you're probably gonna want wanna do the same because well, um, I th I'm I'm trying to imagine a player going inside here and get, getting trapped would probably try to break anything any single thing that they could break and in adventure mode of, of course you can't break any of this stuff except for the lamps so they it should be pretty easy to find escape mechanism maybe say something like a uh, put something like a suggestion on how to get out of there before the trap. I'm not sure, but I'm not a map designer anyway, so that's up to you really. So let's get into the explaining, right? Um, I'm gonna start from the trigger mechanism, even though I said I wasn't gonna say much about it. Um, it uses a trip a tripwire, which obviously um, emits a pulse, right? Now, if you wanna have a machine that uh, that keeps running, you need uh, to. Uh, I mean, you can just have a pulse because that's gonna like power it for a couple seconds, right? So we have um, a pulse reducer, reducer, I'm gonna explain in a second why that is, that's needed, and this is a T-flip-flop um, that only toggles on until you press the uh, release mechanism that's over there. So I'm just gonna go in here and explain you why you need a pulse shortener. Um, first of all, I'm gonna use an, a normal button because that's what you usually, you'd usually use in this case. So, um, look at the comparator there. A T-flip-flop, by, by the way, works like a lever, but you cannot expect uh, the player to press a lever to trap themselves, obviously. Well, that's basically what happened in the movie, but... Um, and the person who did that wasn't the smartest girl, so, you know, can't expect everyone to be dumb, right? Um, just look at the comparator, right? See, it flashed, it went, and it's off, on, off, on. That's not good for a circuit like this. It can cause some insta instabilities. So you might want to shorten it so it's um, so it doesn't cause that. Uh, the original um, version of this circuit is by the Black Belt Panda, which is a YouTuber. He's a YouTuber, um, decently famous, I would say. And this creates a one tick pulse, which is not enough to get through that block. If you if you can, if you look there, the torch did not even flash. So you, need, you actually need a two tick pulse to get through that block, and that doesn't cause any flashing with the, um, the comparator here. As you can see, it just goes off and on. There's no on off on or whatever, and that's the first part which toggles on the circuit. So um, for default, the block in, uh, this is a this is a com um, um, hopper T flip flop. It's nice because it's uh, basically lag free and pretty silent uh, compared to other kinds of T flip flops which uh, use pistons. And for default, the block inside here you need to put a block in these two hoppers facing each other. For default, for default, the block is in here. When this powers, it gets gets to here and is not able to go back to the other uh, hopper, right? And this is why. Uh, you need another circuit to, circuit to um, de-unpower this uh, hopper so it can actually push it back there. 
Um, that's pretty important because if you don't do that, the player can just run over the uh, triple once once again, and that uh, sets the trap uh, off. So going on, this is just a delay to get the player the time to get into into the main chamber, and this is part of the circuit that I'm going to explain in a second. And this is just a, a piston that allows this uh, piston clock to be uh, toggled on. Now this area is a bit complicated. I try to make it as clear as possible. Um, I could have made it more compact, com more compact than this, but I didn't because I, w I needed to explain it. Um, but even better, I have a, a replica of the same circuit here with no complications or anything. So this is the this is an inverted clock. Um, I'm not sure if that's the proper name for it, but this uh, segment of the clock that's on represents this part that's on for default. And the off part is this part. Um, these pistons, by the way, this is a stick. Uh, these are sticky pistons, and these are normal pistons. This one pull down the stone that is created by the stone generator, and this one push it forward to the area that's gonna create. You know, the that's gonna go home, allow the ceiling to come to come down. And yeah, that's about that's about it, right? So this other secret here that I invented, but I'm pretty sure some other people made before me because it's not really that complicated. I mean. It's just a counter. It allows to count the pulses that go through this uh, area of the clock. So every time this pulses, this is gonna go uh, on one step. Counts to three steps because, as you can see, the room is three block wide, three block uh, three blocks wide. And of course, if you had a, um, a room with another shape, you'd need a bigger one. And and let me just show you how it works. So it pulses once, twice, three times, extends that piston and resets itself, itself thanks to this uh, uh, wire. So just turn it off right now. <coughs> there we go. Of course, that piston stands for these pistons over here, which are the ones that push down once there are three blocks below them. And the reset mechanism is this thing over here, um, which um, well, I'm not gonna go ahead and explain this. You just need to know um, that the way I made this one, uh, it needs a, a total of um, well, this setting for the repeater, right? So it's um, just two repeaters, one at the maximum delay and the other one at the f um, second setting, I think. Yes, that's right. Um, you can make it in other ways that require not as don't require as much delay or stuff, but um, and in, with this mechanism, I try to be to go on um, to go on um, to use basically uh, the redstone in the most stable way. So it's not as fast as it could be um, because I wanted to avoid lag, and it's also uh, very hard to break. Sometimes um, redstone has some quirks or stuff, especially uh, stone generators because they are not. If you ever played uh, Skyblock, you're gonna, you'll probably know that um, stone doesn't always take the same uh, amount of time to regenerate, which is a bit of a problem for this sort of thing we, that involve a lot of timing. So I try to make it in. Um, it's not very fast. It could be faster. That's what I'm trying to say, basically. Um, so yeah, this uh, this uh, this clock is gonna. Well, these two pistons are gonna flash. Um, you know. Invertedly, I <laughs> don't know how to say that. When basically, when one is on, the other one is off. And after three pulses of this line of redstone, which accesses the counter in here, uh, it's gonna reset itself and gonna push down the, the cobblestone, the stone. So that's about it. And I'm just gonna go uh, over the escape mechanism very quickly. Uh, it's just a uh, boot on <laughs> behind here. Um, there's nothing really. There's nothing to say really. This is another uh, pull shortener, and which also accesses to, uh, goes to the tip flip flop. Um, yeah, yeah, that's not that's not much to say, right? Well, anyways, that's it for this. I just wanna I'm just gonna say a couple of things about this. Um, this is not the easiest way you can make something like this, but it's I'm pretty sure as for uh, 1.7 is the most automated way because. Um, I'm just gonna show you how to oops to reset the mechanism once you do it because if you make it in other ways it's probably gonna um, take a lot of time really so 
Um, you need to break the, the blocks that are generated, obviously, but you, know, you do not need to replace them because that's the whole point of the stone generator, obviously. And I tried, uh, I'm gonna, oops, I, I am gonna go on some other words where I uh, tried to make this in other ways, and trust me, this is probably one of the best ways. Um, if you ignore uh, stuff like uh, stability and stuff, you can make it in um, in uh, more economical, I mean, efficient ways. Uh, I mean, in regards to the price, really, um, because you need a lot of redstone for this, right? Um, but it's not really a stable. I'm just gonna go on one of my other worlds to show you, and see you there. And here we are in another creative world of mine, and. This is my very first attempt at this trap. Um, as you can see, there's a huge uh, sand wall, and that is because not having a stone generator or any sort of block generation, uh, you need to have the blocks for this. And you will want to use uh, sand or gravel because they are affected by gravity and it makes for a much simpler um, system. Not, um, because uh, you could like have a piston that push, pushes this pillar down, but if you, I mean, Pistons can, can only push uh, up to 16 blocks. Oh, damn it. Bloody rain! <laughs> so anyways, you want to use uh, gravity affected blocks. I'm just going to go ahead and show, and show you how it works. It is not a very refined mechanism, um, but it should work, alright. So it just goes up, it pushes this sand forward, which as you can see, makes it for a pretty cool animation or something. And once it gets to here, and it just, um, I mean, in the text there is a block and pushes that down. And it's pretty instant. Um, I could have used this system in uh, my other uh, version, but there's a little bit of a problem with this. Um, in servers, um, it can cause some problems. Uh, sometimes the redstone is a bit slow, and if it does, if that's too slow, uh, it completely wrecks this stuff because. If this uh, mechanism got triggered even a slightly bit later than this, it would break, break this uh, piece of redstone here, and that would uh, just mess up the. would completely break this circuit here and would be completely useless. So, it's very unlikely that this thing is gonna break, but it can break. Just know that. Let me see at what point we are right, right now. Shouldn't take too much longer. Oh, yes. That's it. Whoever was in there is dead now. Oh, here's a good example. See, now that um, the um, the, um, the sand doesn't have anywhere to um, go further because the, the, it reached the floor, um, you will probably have to count the sand exactly because if you get if you put too much of it, it's gonna just push forward and then get the entire mechanism stuck, right? So that was a bit. That was like one block more than I was supposed to put in there, and which caused a little bit of problem, as you can see. But anyways, um, if you really want to do it the cheap way, this is a good way to do it. It just takes more, um, more, well, I guess, um, maintenance. Um, I'm just gonna show you why you would you wouldn't want to do it really already. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to get in there without triggering it. And this is a lot of blocks that you have to clear out. And you obviously have to do that in um, the other version too, but you'll, you're probably best uh, using torches, by the way. If they, do, they don't do stuff like this, for fuck's sake, come on. Uh -huh. Well, anyways, um, in this system you have, not only have you have to place the blocks, but you also have to clear them out. Well, in the other one you just have to clear them out, which is a lot better, if you ask me. So, that's it for this one. I'm just gonna fix that off camera. So yeah, in my other world, and here we are with the very last um, way I tried to make it, which is actually the first way I tried to make it, but anyways, uh, it's, I'm trying to use um, butt switches, but I'm gonna tell you it's a very bad thing, because um, if you know what a butt switch is, it's a block, block update detection, it's actually a bug in the game, so using a bug to make an entire mechanism is not the best way you can do it. Um, basically, uh, I was trying to make, uh, you know, when I talked about uh, lag efficiency, 
Uh, it's trying to make it so it only does, does something when the when the cobblestone generates and this is actually a way to do it because every time well you have to start it up uh, right now it's only half of the circuit I don't, really, don't do, I don't even really remember how to operate it I think I have to press this button possibly um, it's gonna detect that there is a um, uh, wait Wait, wait a second. Um, first thing is gonna push down this, like, like in the other mechanism, it's gonna pull down these these blocks and push them forward. And the stone is gonna regenerate, and that's gonna trigger this piston, which is gonna toggle this on. This is just the reset, the reset for the bad switch, um, and it's gonna restart the clock another time. So, and this is the um, um, this. It's very glitchy, I needed this to fix it somehow, I can't even remember why. Let me just show it to you. So, as every time... Wait a second, didn't... I didn't ah, okay. Yes, I have to do this, right? Yes. Yes, see? It does work, and it does that pretty quickly. But, it's glitchy as literally fuck. So, it doesn't really stop when you want it to. It, get, it keeps getting broken, as you can see, it just broke some of the water in here it's kind of glitchy, yes, so you don't really want to do it uh, if you were better at bad switches uh, than, than me, you would probably be able to make it like, work properly but I can't, so that's gonna be a challenge for you so let me just one show you one last thing back in this world so all I wanted to say is basically that if you don't have a way to protect these blocks from any other player you're not probably gonna wanna build this in multiplayer unless you are in some servers that have mods like uh, Thunecraft. I think that's uh, that has a way to protect blocks and also like plugins like factions that do not allow anyone that's not in your faction to break the blocks inside it. Uh, so that's all I want to say basically. Um, well, there's, I just have an example of another sort of trap that would be much more efficient in instantaneously killing somebody. Uh, this is this, this, this is an instant mine. If you really want to know how to make one and you can find um, a tutorial on the internet, you can just ask me, but it's pretty easy to make, really. As you can see, it throws you into outer space. I mean, if I wasn't in creative mode, even with full diamond blast protection armor, I would die. I would die. I'm pretty sure about that. And. Yeah, so uh, this is basically a show-off trap, and it's mostly meant for um, for adventure maps. But it, I think you can make it work, even in, in multiplayer. Of course, there's no point in building it in single player, because that's you're the only one that can get trapped by your own trap. That's not very smart, I would say. So I, I hope you liked the video. Um, I, it's, it's my, this is my very first tutorial that has something kind of complicated to explain. I didn't, I didn't go too much into details with this because I am assuming you know something about like the basics of redstone. In case you did not, there's a download link in the description so you can check it out on your own and see how everything is laid out and copy it exactly the way I made it or even test it yourself. And you can just tell me in the comments if there's some trouble, uh, some problems with this setup. Um, I think it's not completely done yet, there's some things that you could make but it's optional really. Uh, like a, a reset mechanism for uh, this part here, but uh, I'm not gonna explain why it needs one. Uh, I might even make a, a new, an updated version of this uh, once 1.8 comes out because it's gonna add uh, slime blocks uh, that, that are gonna make this even more automated, I think. Uh, it's gonna take me some time to work it out though. So I hope you liked the video. If you, li if you did, please uh, like the video, maybe subscribe since so far it's not going too well for my YouTube channel. and. Uh, See you next time.